So continuing the discussion of how it's important to have characters that can show off your game. And it's important to have characters that are in the narrative competitively that can show off this game as well. So it can help the audience understand what the game is about. So let's talk about a game that has a failed narrative, if you will, and that game would be Carno's Revenge. Now I know I've talked about this game before and I've said many times the game does run a very fine line between being completely scrub-a-dub and deceptively skillful. And maybe people think that I talk about it because I've been told I'm the best in the world at it and again if people know my story in it, I basically learned the game in a couple of weeks of playing it and then I was already competing versus all the top dudes doing combo video combos and real matches. Within just a couple months later there was already like a thread about me on 2chan and people saying that I was too good and I took the fun out of the game for everyone. You know, there's at one point the Japanese were recording me a lot in the game and honestly the matches were so bad, it probably looked like I faked it. I was beating people so badly at it, but you know, the point still stands that although I do agree it's a pretty scrub-a-dub game, it is kind of deceptively skillful. And for the time that it came out, and even now, some of the stuff you can do in the game is actually pretty awesome, I think. But it's a game with a bad narrative, and that's what I want to kind of talk about in this series. And by that, I mean the game does not have characters that are in the narrative who show off the game well. In fact, I'd say there's probably only two good characters for this specific goal. The only top tier character who shows off the game well would be, you know, something like Karnov, right? But the rest of the top tier is pretty bland, I'd say, you know, like Ray, like, baked potato, wheel kick, wheel kick. You know, whatever, baked potato, blah, blah, blah. Or a character like Zazzy, who is, you know, potentially one of the most broken, scrubbed up characters ever created in fighting game history. Fighter's history, fighter game history, you know, he's ridiculous, it's extremely scrubbed up. So generally speaking, out of the top five characters in the game, though, in a game where those top tier are so very powerful, you only have one character in the whole narrative for the casual audience to understand your game. And that's not good, right? So who would be the other character that would be good for showing off the game? And that would be the character this is about, Mizuguchi, right? So unfortunately for Mizuguchi, though, Mizuguchi is only a mid-tier character, right? So he's not super in the narrative of the story of the game. But he is a character that can potentially show off the game extremely well, actually, right? Unfortunately, once again, I've never seen anyone, doesn't matter when I was beating the Japanese, doesn't matter who it was or anything, do the kind of stuff that I showed that was possible. Even for Hurricane Kick Loops, I've only ever seen a couple other Japanese dudes ever even hit it off of Dizzy's, you know what I mean? Which is still a cool combo to show off. But hitting it off a of Dizzy isn't showing you the potential narrative of the beauty of the game. And that's what I'm trying to do here, right? So the two main things that I want to show off in this video are aiming for Dizzy spots. Because again, this isn't a Dizzy combo. This is actually aiming for it in real matches off random hits. So aiming Dizzy spots in a Hurricane Kick Link combo and the Big Blue, right? So let's start off with the DP, right? Karnov is a game where there's a lot of very powerful moves, right? Dragon Punch is all over the place, right? Mizuguchi is no exception, right? However, one of Mizuguchi's secret moves is his big blue DP, right? Mizuguchi basically goes from having the least invincible DP in the game to the big blue DP being the most invincible DP in the game, right? Also, the big blue, its hitbox, it will hit dizzy spots that normally the opponent can actually hide, okay? However, there's a caveat, right? In this game, you know, you can change your stance while you're being comboed. You can go from ducking to standing or standing to ducking. This means that even if the big blue DP hits you, you can duck after the first hit, and this will make the rest of the move whiff. And then you get punished, and in a game where you can die in one combo, one mistake, you're dead, right? However, we take this a step further, right? There are three characters, though, in this game that actually cannot duck the Big Blue. Mastorius, Gene, and Zazzy, right? This is important because in a game that is potentially as clusterfuck as this, Mizuguchi can actually roll the dice and gamble with a Big Blue DP actually any matchup, like versus Gene or Zazzy, right? So versus these characters, you have that most invincible DP, which is guaranteed to hit a dizzy spot, and they actually can't duck out of it. So this is extremely important to be able to have against a character 
that are already so potentially overwhelmingly overpowering in the game, right? And assuming you can do the hurricane kick loop, you now have a mid-tier character who can potentially roll the dice versus a high tier character, which is not common. Now again, the skill to do a full full hurricane kick loop versus Zazzy bitch slap or a Gene bitch slap is absolutely laughable. It's not even in the same dimension, but <laughs> video games aren't fair. We got to take what we can get, right? But it's very interesting. I don't know if it just serendipitously happened like that, but the way the big blue DP works in this game, it's absolutely amazing if you think about the grand scheme of the game, right? So I talked about aiming and hiding dizzy spots as it's important, right? So a basic concept is after you've hit a stray hurricane kick, you know what I mean? You link with a light attack, right? However, you can link with anything. It could be a standing light kick, little punch, duck little kick, duck little pinch, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? They all have different hitboxes, and it changes which part of the opponent they can hit and if it can even hit the dizzy spot or not, right? And then if you get into the mind game, if the opponent knows how to change their hitboxes, you have a whole other potential mind game that you will not see, generally speaking, realistically, versus other characters. The hurricane kick loops can work potentially with any light. However, it will not dizzy with any light and it will not be the same versus every character. Versus every character, you might potentially have to do something different, which again leads to the narrative of the random hurricane kick links while aiming for dizzy spots and going for combos. Not just a dizzy, dizzy combo, not just showing the audience, oh, here's a huge dizzy combo, showing it being linked off random attacks switching it up and aiming for dizzy spots while in a real match randomly to get the dizzy and then go for that. This is something Mizuguchi can actually do in real matches. This, this tells the story of what the game can be. Unfortunately, again, I've never seen anyone do this off stray hits like I've done where they've actually went for and actually aimed for dizzy spots legitimately, right? Unfortunately, again, I'm the only person that's ever seen that have done, has done this, but it is what it is. It's still a potential narrative of the game, right? So here I'll show some examples again of, of combos where you can see if I were to quotation marks fail the combo. I didn't aim for the right dizzy spot or, you know, and one where I'm successfully aiming for the dizzy spot while comboing, right? Same combo, but going for a different dizzy spot to optimize it, right? So the idea of getting the most damage while saving the dizzy spot for the last point to get that instant kill combo, whatever it might be, right? So... I know this was kind of long, but I wanted to kind of talk about the potential of what Karna's Revenge could be. But Mizuguchi isn't really a character that's generally in the narrative of the game. So you don't get to see this kind of stuff. Karnov is an amazing character. Think about Karnov. He's crazy, right? There's memes about Karnov. But that's because Karnov is a top tier character, right? And he's a little bit easier to do, right? Actually, a lot easier to do, right? Kar Karnov's Infinite is not that hard. You know, like I said... Compared to the stuff you did, the, compared to doing what Mizuguchi does, it's it's not even close, right? And that's not just just like a regular. And that's not saying that I'm saying Miz Mizuguchi is the most skilled character ever created in the history of man. I'm not trying to say that because you can definitely you know scrub out a couple hurricane kicks and DPS and win some shit, right? The game is potentially pretty scrub a dub, but Mizuguchi is also potentially a extremely complicated character from a certain sense that shows off a real interesting narrative of the game right but he's not in the game right he's not in the game to that extent that the casual audience could appreciate what Karno's revenge could be do you kind of get what i'm getting at when i'm talking about this kind of stuff right kind of simple but hopefully you got it so uh you can name another game you want me to talk about but that's the end for now